Hey there, how's it going? Yeah, I blew my top yesterday, and yeah, I was being a hypocrite yesterday because I will talk about how we need to be more understanding and all of that, and I wasn't that way yesterday at all. So, you know, I'm not proud of what I did yesterday, but, uh, and I think the only other time that I got that pissed off, at least on camera anyway, uh, was when uh, Mr. Repsion, uh, you know, I, I made a, re a response video to something Mr. Repsion was talking about in other videos, and I guess he he didn't really have that the position that a lot of people thought he did, or he just completely changed his position. I don't know. Whatever it is, he doesn't feel that way now, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, where he was suggesting that uh, those that are really, really depressed, that are chronically depressed, who can't seem to find medications to take care of it, should be able to look at suicide as a as a valid option. And, and my argument was, well, hey, if, if I had felt that the the during the, the year previous to me making that response video, I would be dead now. And that's true. So, anyway. Um, but when something is affecting so many lives something uh, uh, attitudes could be affecting it could be a life and death situation for people I get pretty serious about it I can get pretty angry at it and when it comes to the way that black people are still treated in a lot of portions of our culture I think this is a very fucking serious issue um I mean, if there's even a hint of truth to Malcolm, Malcolm X's statement in the 50s that, where he said that the KKK turned in their robes for police uniforms, um, if there's even a slight, slight amount of truth to that, even at a just like 2% or 1%, then these statistics that we see about black people in crime are going to be skewed because if black people are targeted more then they're obviously going to be seen more in the statistics now this isn't trying to say that that uh, black people don't commit uh, haven't been committing more crimes statistically but the statistics may be skewed. And another thing is how people aren't wanting to look at why black people have been committing more crimes. Why is this the case and what can we do about it? What can be done about it? You know, if, if you're just repeating the statistics over and over again, that is essentially shaming an entire group of people. It's shaming them. Well, I'm, we're only shaming the ones that are criminals. Well, that's not how that works. You shame that group, you're shaming the whole group. Sorry, that's how that works. That's the same reason why when during, the, like I've tried bringing it before, the same reason why during the 80s and the 90s when people would say, well, gay people spread AIDS. Um, that... You know, or gay people need to stop spreading AIDS, right? Well, yeah, you may not be speaking towards all gay people, but all gay people feel it. I mean, you can't deny this. And some of the argument was, well, you know, uh, when people would say that, that's, that's just mainly religious people trying to uh, state their hatred of gay people in, in, in reality. Why is that different than, than this? Because a lot of the people stating it aren't religious I mean do you actually are you actually truly believing that if you're an atheist that you're automatically going to be more rational and logical wow I mean that may not be your argument that might be some people's argument though and then there's people that will say well you know uh, we just need to be blunt and scream it from the rooftops you know, because people aren't listening. They're not wanting to see, see the statistics. I'm like, oh, 
Oh, so it's about, you know, oh, well, you're just keeping it real, right? Well, I, I should go around to, if I see someone skinny, I should go up to them and say, well, you need to eat something. And if there's someone that's fat that I can tell doesn't like being fat, I should tell them, hey, you should get some self-control. I should go up to someone who I don't think is attractive and say, wow, who beat you with an ugly stick? I mean, you know, we're just telling it like it is. We're just being real, right? I mean, just look at yourself when, you, when you're, you're stating this stuff. I'm serious. Look at what you're actually doing. Well, oh, I'm just keeping it real. I'm just stating it like it is, and people aren't listening. I think most people know this the, the, about these statistics already. They want to do something about it, including people that are a lot of people that are in the BLM. Okay, I am not going to try to claim that Black Lives Matter is some excuse me some great movement. Okay, to me, they've been causing a hell of a lot more harm than they, they have good. And that's because the place they're coming from is revenge. Okay, you're not going to get anywhere when, you're, when, you, when a movement is ran by revenge. A movement, as I've said earlier, you know, any movement can be ruined by a bad attitude. And Black Lives Matter has been ruined by a bad attitude. If they really went for the actual reasons why they're they're um, why the movement was started in the first place and not ran by this revenge kind of thing, a revenge kind of emotion, it might be getting somewhere, but it's not. So But one of the areas that One of the reasons why black people um, are in this are in that mindset that allows that makes them commit more crimes is because there is a tradition in the black community to have an apprehension towards white culture. And the reason for them having that apprehension is because of decades and decades and decades and decades following the end of slavery, attitudes that are leftovers of why it took so long for slavery to actually come to an end. You just have to look at the uh, comment section on any video on YouTube that shows black people being violent. You just have to look at the comment section of any of those to see it. Um, you just have to hear uh, conversations in real life where people are being really candid about things to see it, to hear it. You know, as I said, if, if, if there is even a hint of truth to Malcolm X's statement in the 50s about the police uh, force, then bringing up these statistics over and over again isn't going to help anything. Bringing these statistics up over and over again is purely just shaming people. Okay? Shaming people isn't going to help anything. Just like when I've talked about when I was in that uh, uh, that meeting of uh, uh, people trying to uh, promote a an anti-gay initiative in the name of religious freedom back in the early 90s, you know, when, when ACT UP barged into the room and said, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Shame, shame, shame. That didn't help shit. That did more damage than good. A hell of a lot more damage. What my friends and I were doing in that meeting were actually helping because we were asking pointed questions to get people to see what was going on. Right. But no, no, no. Let's, let's barge in and say shame, shame, shame. 
So, you know, we have we have a problem going on in this country, but instead of talking about it, let's just bring up the statistics and and point and basically say shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. We don't care about you. Shame on you. It's not going to help. The way that we take care of the apprehension that black people sometimes have towards white culture is certainly not to continue to perpetuate the things that make black people have a negative attitude about white culture. That's not how you do it. <laughs> it just... Oh, well, them having that attitude about white culture, that's racist. So are, are gay people who are nervous in the Bible Belt? They're nervous about showing a, a, a gay couple. They're nervous about showing any affection in public um, in the Bible Belt. Is that, uh, is that uh, heterophobia? Hmm? Is that heterophobia? No? Why not? So are, are, are you really going to say that, that black people who have an apprehension towards white culture are actually racist because they're scared? They're scared that a white person is going to, well, um, I'm going to uh, call the police on you because uh, you made me nervous. Well, you're going to kick me out of the store because you carried yourself the wrong way. You look the wrong way. Um, you know, people like George Zimmerman, or do I have his name right? Um, you know, uh, knowing that there are people like that all, you know, all over the place that have that kind of attitude. Yeah, uh, them having a fear of that kind of thing. Well, that's that's racism against white people. And knowing that if they get pulled over, they have to extra ass kiss the police officer. Yes, Amasa. Yes, Amasa. Or they have to worry about getting shot. And even if they try to go through the right motions, and they, they try to do everything right, they could still get shot. How about the recent case of uh, the police being called on someone who was, who was suicidal? And the police officer gets there, and that officer was a good officer and didn't shoot the guy. He had had training in, in the military and, know, and knows some of the things to look for and knew the guy wasn't going to shoot and was going to try to talk him out of it because the guy wanted the police officer to shoot him in a basically, a, well, I don't know what you call it, I forgot the name of it, a, a, a suicide via police, right? <laughs> um, and other police arrived, shot the guy, and then the guy who didn't shoot the guy was fired because, oh, well, you put the other officers at risk. When that sort of shit goes on, we're just, well, you know, no, there's no, uh, no problem here. Now, granted, there is a big problem with the police force in general. Um, <laughs> we, we need to take care of this, this idea that, that seems to be perpetuated in, in uh, police departments where, well, you know, the uh, shoot first and ask questions later. Yeah, that needs to end. I mean, flat out. They need to be taught more how to de-escalate a situation instead of escalating it. If some the police are called for, hey, there's someone who's going to commit suicide, and you and you you think it's your job to go there to just shoot them, yeah, there's a pretty bad problem going on. You know that should be addressed. But according to to people, you know, we should never address that that issue. Uh, when it comes to groups 
you know, demographics that are disproportionately targeted more in that kind of behavior. No, no, don't, don't do that. So it just seems if, if black people don't say anything, then they're kind of screwing themselves over. And then if they say something, we've got all these people saying, uh, uh, well, you know, don't uh, uh, stop trying to get a pity party uh, uh, for your group because everyone is affected. Well, not nearly as much as that. Just like in the 80s and the 90s, people would say that gay people are trying to get a pity party when they would rally uh, against uh, some of the way they were being treated, you know. This, this, all this stuff is so frustrating. It's so frustrating. And, and the, these, these attitudes from so many people, particularly the right, who thinks that uh, shaming is a great tactic to take care of uh, a problem, yeah, that shit had me blowing my top yesterday. It did. And I'm not proud of blowing my top. Sometimes we've had enough. So I guess uh, I don't really know what more to say in this video. Have a good day.